we are still working at putting our marriage first. Mm -hmm. Uh, We both love being busy. So he's either busy with work or I'm busy with work. And then, or one of us has the kids. And so it's hard. I'm like, no, we need to make more time for just the two of us. I mean, often we're home in the evening together, but it's like, we're not together, together. We're just kind of in the same room. I was talking to my girlfriends about this the other day, and we were all talking about kind of how your love languages might change, like throughout your marriage, depending on what season you're in. And so mine like naturally are like acts of service and gifts. But right now, like, I don't know, gifts don't really matter anymore to me. And it's funny because my friends were like, Oh, well, what you wanted for like your gift was time with your husband, which kind of sounds like quality time is your And I was like, oh, maybe it is. So I feel like as we get more busy in our relationship, quality time has become one of my love languages because I don't get it naturally as much anymore. It's so interesting. You're listening to Breaking the Ice, a podcast and community created for wives and girlfriends of professional hockey players, but since has turned into so much more. Stories shared by women around the globe who come together for a sense of connection and community. You may be in the sports industry, a hockey parent, an athlete, or a person who just enjoys podcasts, but I can promise you, you'll be inspired by these women every single day while we evolve through the tips, tricks, do's, and don'ts for all things hockey. And guess what? So much more for women, by women, but especially for a hockey community. So lace them up and tune in for a new episode every Wednesday. Thanks for listening. Hello, hello. Welcome to Breaking the Ice. Sometimes I like to give a little intro about the podcast if you're new here. This is a podcast I created for families, girlfriends, wives of professional hockey players. But since the podcast started a couple of years ago, almost two years, it has evolved into so much more. There are women that tune in weekly who are not even a part of this hockey community They just find themselves really resonating with the topics and the episodes, and this also can be a podcast for you if your husband plays in the sports world, but not necessarily specifically to hockey. I thought that this was a perfect time to have an episode on motherhood, marriage, and having time for yourself. Right now... For a lot of us, if you play in Europe, we are in playoffs or nearing the end of the season. And I know for the girls that are back home in North America, there's some long, lonely road trips going on right now, or just the trade deadline just happened. So lots of movement right now with our hockey community. It's kind of that that time of season, and it's that season of life where things are shifting again. So, you know, things are not... Things are never really very smooth and balanced, but that kind of calm of the season is now going to get picked back up as we all travel home or wherever you're at, whatever point you're at. So I thought this was a great time to talk about motherhood. Today on the podcast, I had Stacey Kasdorf join me, and I have followed Stacey for a long time on Instagram. She is an influencer. She's a blogger. She has such a great feed. She has so many tips on motherhood. She shares her own experiences with motherhood. She shares the fun stuff, the not so fun stuff. So if you do not follow Stacy already, make sure to go check out her Instagram page. And also you can click the link in her bio to check out some of her blog posts, which I really found myself resonating with. I read quite a few before we got the opportunity to chat and I just really connected with them. So in this episode, we talk about all things motherhood, marriage, and time for yourself. We talk about burnout as a mom. We talk about making time for your marriage as a mom, because sometimes that kind of gets put on the back burner when you're busy and you're tired AF at the end of the day, and all you want to do is just kick your feet up, binge a Netflix show, and have a glass of wine. In the term of burnout, I actually love this topic because it's something that we hear about, we see, maybe we think burnout's just one day and then we're back to normal, but burnout is kind of like a phase. And when you don't always recognize that you are heading into that direction of burnout, once you're there, it's a little bit more challenging to pull yourself out of. So we talk about how Stacy recognizes when she is heading into that direction of burnout and what she does to pull herself out. 
Um, We also talk about the love languages. She shares which love languages she is and how it changes depending on what season of life you're in. If you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with the love languages. I actually studied it in one of my classes in college. My I drive my husband nuts about it because he just kind of rolls his eyes whenever I talk about the love languages, but I really love it. I think it's so interesting. Her husband actually signed in Germany for a bit when her daughters were two, one, and she was pregnant with her third daughter. So she wound up staying back and she shares how that was one of the hardest times that she has ever had as a mom. We also talk about how hard it is to ask for help when you're so used to doing everything on your own. I know for me, like I've really never had help. My family does not live by me, even in the off season, they live a few states over, which is like a two hour plane ride. So unless they're visiting or we're visiting them, like I do not have that off season help either. So I've kind of been just navigating motherhood on my own, especially with COVID. Um, and Stacy shares how she's really used to doing everything on her own too, even though her family lives kind of nearby, but she actually had her first two kids during hockey life. So she shares about her journey with that, living in a hotel with a five month old. She also shares about some of her tips for flying with kids on an airplane, which you can also read about in her blog on her website. So there's a lot more that we talk about in this episode, but I don't want to spoil everything. So you're going to have to listen to find out. I want to take a minute to thank you guys so much for just tuning in weekly, tuning into the episodes that resonate with you and just participating on the Instagram page. I honestly notice and see those that are, you know, responding to polls, questions, stories, just sending messages, having those interactions, because they're just super important to keeping the podcast going and just makes me feel like I'm doing something right. So I see you and I appreciate you. And I'm just very thankful that you are choosing breaking the ice to listen to. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Enjoy this episode and I will catch you soon. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to chat with you and I love your blog and I love following you on Instagram. So I'm excited to learn more about you today. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for reaching out. Of course. So I always ask guests to start off just kind of introducing yourself, where you're from, who you are, what you've got going on. So I'm Stacy Kasdorf. I, my husband, like I knew nothing about hockey until I met my husband and he kind of introduced me to that whole world. But now we are not in that world and I'm at home with my three girls. I have three daughters, five, four, and two, and they are amazing. I love them. They're a handful being so close in age, but I wouldn't (laughs) trade it for anything. I did go to school for investment or finance. And I worked in investment banking when I first graduated. And then once we got married, I kind of had to follow his dream of hockey, which he was very clear about when we were dating. He's like, this is what I want to do. So just so you know, you're going to be following me around. And I was like, okay. (laughs) So it was easier said right. than done. It was like when it was a hypothetical, I was like, yeah, sure. That sounds fun. But, but when I actually had to like give up my career to move to the States where I couldn't work, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this isn't as cool as I thought it would be. So uh, that was definitely hard, but then obviously I wanted to support him. And now we've kind of come full circle where now it's like, well, not more about me. Now it's like equal really. Cause he still has a job, but I get to do what I love now, which is really nice. So now I just run an Instagram account and basically help companies with marketing and I love building relationships with other moms and just giving tips about living a healthy lifestyle and raising kids. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So I feel like I have so many questions for you. I went on a deep dive of your blog and (laughs) I loved reading a lot of your posts and I just found myself really resonating with a lot of them. And we're going to get into a lot of the mom topics too, because I think it's interesting just as a mom hearing other moms experiences, just, and especially with you having three young children close in age and having two of them right while he was still playing hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I read one of your blog posts too, about how you did long distance for a bit and he went to Germany. What was that like for you? Because 
like, obviously he told you, okay, yeah, we're going to do like, we're going to follow me around. But then when he went to Germany, that's like a whole nother level. (laughs) Yeah, that was crazy. That was actually probably one of the hardest times for us because our oldest was two. The, my youngest was one and I was pregnant with my youngest now. And we didn't have a house because we didn't know what he was doing with hockey. We were still kind of renting. So we ended up moving into my grandma's condo because she moved in with my parents. She wasn't doing great health wise. And it was like an old people building. So they weren't (laughs) stoked on the fact that there were little kids in the building. So it was me and my two little girls and I was pregnant and it's like, don't make noise. Don't cry. Don't scream. We can't run through the hallways. And I just felt like Mm -hmm. so worried all the time. Plus we were in a condo. So it was super small. We didn't really have any of like our own stuff. We didn't have a ton of toys. Um, it was like the middle of winter, which are the worst in Winnipeg. It was really cold. So that was probably like my, one of my hardest times actually as a mom, just feeling, and my family was here. That was so great. I could go visit like my parents anytime I wanted to, but I mean, I'm still like on my own with my girls most of the time. So that was really draining. Plus I missed my husband, my girls missed their dad. Um, and that with the time change, which I'm sure, you know, it's so hard to even find times to talk. Yeah. So yeah, that was really difficult and kind of, so that's kind of when we had to reassess like, Hey, what are we doing here? Do you want to keep playing? Are we all coming there? Are you stopping? It was like kind of that transition period for us. And so what ultimately led you guys to the decision for him to stop playing? He was trying to get his German passport. Cause then I think it's a lot easier to get on an international team. Cause they can mm-hmm. only have a certain number of like North American players. Uh, anyways, he couldn't get it. And at the end of the day, so it wouldn't, it would have been hard for him to get on the team. And then if he did, I was like, okay, so we're going to move our whole family of five out there to like a one bedroom apartment is basically what they were offering him. And the pay wasn't fantastic. And so I, I obviously left it totally in his court. Cause this has been his dream forever. And I'm like, do you want to still playing? Like, we'll figure it out if you really want to. And he's like, you know what? No, this, this wasn't like my dream to play in Europe. He's like, I think we can. You're like, thank God. Now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, phew. <laughs> I actually do totally miss the moving and traveling though. I feel like a lot of people might think that's overwhelming, but for me, that was so exciting. So when he wanted to stop, I was like, oh, I'm like, that kind of might've been fun to like move to Germany for a little bit, but obviously, obviously it was easier to stay home. So yeah, he came home and then we kind of just tried to figure out what was next for us. Yeah. Okay. So what inspired you to start a blog and what kind of outlet has this been like for you? Um, so much more than I ever thought. So I first started blogging when my oldest was five months old, we were living in Rochester in a hotel. He was playing for the Rochester Americans and we probably lived, lived in that hotel for two months. So it was like a very long time with a five month old And she always had to go down for her morning nap and Jason would be on ice and I would just have to sit and like quietly in a dark hotel room so that she could nap and I wouldn't wake her up. So relatable. Right. And I'm like, this is so terrible. I'm like, I'm so bored. I can't just sit here. I couldn't even like turn on the TV because it was so bright for her. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to start blogging. Also, this is crazy that we're living in a hotel. People should know like what's going on and kind of like share our lifestyle. So that's how it was born. And yeah, I started a lot with like motherhood stuff and kind of our journey in hockey. And then it kind of took off from there. So I just, yeah, again, when the healthy recipes, I loved sharing that. So it was mostly that until we moved home. And then once hockey kind of finished, I was like, okay, that chunk of the blog is gone. And I started sharing more on my Instagram page. And I think it was, wasn't until the big or two years ago, probably now I was like, Oh, companies will like send you stuff to promote them. I'm like, that's kind of fun. So I'd reach out to like brands that I was already using and like products I already loved. And I got a few like products here and there. And then I just kept sharing like obviously free content, like recipes, workouts, different things that would, I guess, got people to follow me. And then, yeah, it just, in the last year, it turned into a business. I actually incorporated last year and it's been so fun. So I actually went to school for business. So I 
know everything about like marketing and all that side of it. So I actually get to like use my degree now too, which is fun. I know a lot of people think it's just like about getting free product, which is fun, but now I get to like work with brands and like come up with marketing strategies, um, and just helping them reach their like perfect clientele. It's, and it's even more than I thought. Like, it's also more creative. I'm not a very creative person by nature. So this is like pushed me out of my shell to get more into like reels and video and photo and stuff like that. So I really enjoy that. It's like pushing me outside my comfort zone too. Yeah. That's so awesome. I was going to say when you're like, I'm not a creative person. I'm like, I love your reels. I love your page (laughs) and your feed. And I just think it's so cool that you can take something that you love and really share your life and have people that are following you resonate it or resonate with it. And also just seeing your home renovations are so cool, which I want to talk about later. So I think having a blog and sharing aspects of your life too, that are like not so glamorous and, you know, that maybe a mom reading it or just a person reading it can really relate to it and feel not so alone is really awesome. So go back to when you guys first decided to have kids. So you knew you were in the hockey world, you're living in a hotel. That was obviously really challenging. I haven't lived in a hotel with my child, but I know (laughs) how that would go over. I think I would lose my mind, especially (laughs) at that age. I just remember like my my son's one years old now, but like just having to text under the covers. Cause you're just so fearful that like any <laughs> sort of light or anything will wake them totally. up. But okay. So then you guys had two kids in the hockey world. Were you guys, were you, tra- were you living with your husband when he was going from team to team? And were you guys living away from family with both of your kids? Yes. Uh, yes. And yes. So He didn't actually have to move around a ton. Usually like kind of where he started the season is where he stayed other than that hotel stint. So we could usually (laughs) be with with him, which was nice. Um, But yeah, we were always away from family. So it's funny because I started motherhood away from family. It didn't feel, I mean, it might've been hard, but it's all I knew. So I wasn't like, oh, I miss my mom. I miss a babysitter. I miss familiar people it's kind of all I knew. So it, and I'm, I've always been really outgoing. And so I always just like met people where we lived. I found like mom's groups. I went to local libraries. Like that was so fun for me, like just connecting with other moms in the area and like taking my girls with me. And so that part was really fun. It didn't feel hard until, or unless he was like on the road for like a week. And then I was like, Hey, (laughs) super lonely. I want to break from my kids. Yes. Um, especially when they're so little, But looking back on it, I just have more like fond memories than anything. Like it was just so fun getting to explore with my girls. You know, it's hard not having help. And that's nice that you guys have family where you are now, because it's probably, I don't know about you, but like for me, I've, like you said, when you said that we, it's kind of all I knew, like, that's kind of all I know. Like I've pretty much been alone for most of my son's life, except over the summer, this past summer. But it is interesting. Like when I go home now, I feel like my parents want to help. They're like, oh, let me get that for you. Or, oh, I can hold him. And I'm like holding yeah. a million things. Like he's in my right arm. I'm like, no, I got it. It's good. It's like so hard for me to accept help. Totally. Oh my goodness. I feel like I almost don't ask for help very often, which can become like a bad thing because I'm just so used to doing it all on my own. Where as like now I have the help of like my mom and my mother in law but I, it's almost like they have to ask to help. And I'm like, oh, sure. I guess versus like me going and looking for the help, which is like a weird thing, but I'm, and I'm like, still just like getting used to it. Exactly. So you obviously have three little girls. What are some things that you do to, you know, fill your cup and keep you sane? Obviously our kids are our lives, but you know, at the end of the day, it's really important to take care of yourself too. Totally. My number one thing I'd say are my workouts. I used to be able to go to the gym all the time, which was awesome. And then because of COVID and everything, I started working out from home and I've been working out for like a year and a half consistently Monday to Friday, just like super quick workouts. They're like 20 minutes, but my girls in the beginning, they would be like all over me and like crying. They were also younger, (laughs) but now they know like, Nope, this is mom's time. Like if I wake up and don't put my workout clothes on, my oldest daughter is like, mom, where are your workout clothes? I'm like, 
Yes. I Holding love you that accountable. Is, right. <laughs> like it's just as much a part of their routine as it is of mine, which I love. And now they kind of like leave me alone and I can get it done. And then I feel like that just sets the tone for the day. I have like, I just feel, I don't know, like a new person. I've done something for myself to start the day and then I can take care of them better. So that's like my number one thing. And then again, I'm trying to get better at this because I have a hard time asking for help, but just taking more time out, like with my girlfriends in the evening away from my kids. And then more recently I've started to like make appointments for myself, like get micro needling or go for a massage or get microblading, just like things to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I've really enjoyed that. Yeah. I think that's a good reminder to get out with your girlfriends. Cause I think we all kind of get stuck in that, um, routine, right? Like that schedule and the bedtime and totally, you know, we have like a significant other, obviously that can do those things too, but I think we kind of get like attached to that. So that's, that's a good reminder to me to do that too, because I always feel like I leave girls nights or hanging out with my close friends, feeling a lot more refreshed and excited to see my family when I get home. Totally. Like sometimes it's hard to leave because once the kids go to bed, I'm often just like, I don't want to do anything. I want to put on sweatpants and put my feet up, which is usually what I do, but you're right. The time like that I make myself go out, I just feel so much better. And it's so good to just connect with other adults for a while and with no kids around. Yeah. When you have children, I think it's harder, obviously to make time for your relationship and especially having three what are some things that you guys do to kind of keep the little like love flowing, you know, because again, with the routines, it's just so easy to kind of let that fall through the cracks sometimes. Totally. And I think we are like super guilty of this. We are still working at putting our marriage first. Mm -hmm. Uh, We both love being busy. So he's either busy with work or I'm busy with work. And then, or one of us has the kids. And so it's hard. I'm like, no, we need to make more time for just the two of us. I mean, often we're home in the evening together, but it's like, we're not together together. We're just in the same room. So for Christmas, actually, I just said to him, like, I don't even want any gifts. We don't need anything. I said, I just want to go on more dates with you. So we've been making that more of a priority to like get our parents to come watch the girls or once they're in bed, actually like having a plan to do something together, together. Um, and that's really been helping. What's your love language? I am acts of service and gifts. That's a good one. I'm like quality time. So when you said that, I was like, Oh, that's so us too. I feel like, like you said, I totally relate to just being so tired at the end of the day. It's like, put your kids to bed, do like that, you know, cleaning grind, cleaning up all the toys and everything. And then you just want to veg the F out. And I feel like we're both just sitting on our phones and I'm like, (laughs) I miss that like connection. I'm like, we need to make more time to like go out for dates and stuff like that. Cause again, you're just so exhausted and wiped out. Okay. That's so funny. You said yours is quality time because I was talking to my girlfriends about this the other day and we were all talking about kind of how your love languages might change like throughout your marriage, depending on what season you're in. And so mine like naturally are like acts of service and gifts, but right now, like, I don't know, gifts don't really matter anymore to me. And I, it's funny because my friends were like, Oh, well, what you wanted for like your gift was time with your husband, which kind of sounds like quality time is your, and I was like, Oh, maybe it is. So I feel like as we get more busy in our relationship, quality time has become one of my love languages because I don't get it naturally as much anymore. It's so interesting. I love that. Yeah. I'm so fascinated with the love languages. I think it's so cool. I mean, I think everybody needs a little bit of everything, right? Like I'm like, okay, like I'd like a little gift here and there, but that's definitely not (laughs) like my, probably my top three, but yeah, it is just interesting. And I think you really have to make that a priority like time, because like you said, it just, it doesn't come so easily when you're so busy all the time, especially when you guys are both working on top of that too. Right. It was so hard. And I think fall was like the hardest time because we decided to buy a house and flip it to sell. And Jason's always wanted to do this. And I'm like, sure, like go for it without really thinking about it because it's not like that's his job. He still like kept his normal job and then just did that on evenings and weekends. So 
I didn't see him for like three months and I did like bedtimes all by myself. I felt like I was back in the hockey world. I was like, you're (laughs) never here. And so that was, and, and that was like one of my busiest seasons for work, like leading up to Christmas. And I just, I felt it. I felt so burnt out. I felt like I didn't talk to him. I felt like the girls were kind of getting like the, like the end of us, not like the best of us. So that was like for sure too much. And we recognized that. Okay. I would love to talk about burnout. I think this is such an important topic with moms. Hey guys, I want to take a moment to talk about one of our sponsors for today's episode, which is Viore. For all of the moms that are listening, you know that our kids are always on the go, which means that us as moms are always on the go, which also means that we need the most comfortable clothes possible. Whenever I am headed out with my kid to either the park, the mall, wherever I'm going, I grab a pair of my Viore joggers or leggings and call it a day. This is also perfect if you are trying to get a quick workout in in the middle of your busy day of watching your kids, just really easy to transition or pair it with a cute leather jacket and go out to dinner. I love Viore for the quality. Like I said in an episode a couple weeks ago, I'm just really trying to focus more on quality over quantity when it comes to clothing as I get older. And I am really just obsessed with everything on their website. So you can go to viori.com slash ice for 20% off your order today. That's viori.com slash ice, and they will be offering international shipping super soon. So I'll keep you guys posted. I read something on your blog that said that it's so important to take time for yourself and it's not selfish. It's necessary. And if you don't recognize you need, you need a break, you'll have a meltdown, which I completely relate. That's me too. (laughs) And I think it's really hard to recognize sometimes when you're not yet at that point of burnout, but you're on your way. And then once you hit it, it's just like, it's not good. (laughs) So what are, have you been able to identify kind of those cues and signals as to when you're approaching the burnout? Yes. Usually like the biggest clue is like, I'm short with my girls which usually is a sign that I'm stressed. So if I'm, that's like, kind of like, okay, there's too much going out. I have like going on, I haven't taken time for myself. So I'll often like take on less work myself. If I know Jason's busy and he can't be as flexible as I can, I'll say no to work stuff. And then so that my schedule calms down and my stress comes down. And then also just make sure I'm getting that time for me away from my girls. What do you do for self-care? Uh, kind of like what I said before, like I, again, I'm not great at this. I should do it more often, but going out with my girlfriends and then just going for like a treatment for myself, like yeah, going yeah. to a spa or something like that. I feel like recharges me or even just getting to do my work with no one around. Yes. That sounds so weird because work usually isn't a break for people, but because I work from home and so much of like my life is intertwined with my work, my girls are always there. So right. for me to get like a day of just like work where I can just, cause I love what I do without like the girls yelling in the background. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, this is actually quite nice. So even just like that time alone with my work is really like rejuvenating. That's actually really triggering for me. I've noticed is when I don't have enough time in the week to really just sit down by myself and not get work done. And I feel like it's kind of like that thing where you're like, okay, I'm going to type something and do something really quick. And then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to play with my son. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to get this part done. And then I'm going to go back. And it's like, you don't really get to sit down and have that uninterrupted time. And so when that starts to build up over the week, I do think you kind of hit a point where you're like, I'm losing my mind. Like I need to get this done. This, this one thing that should take me like an hour has now taken me three hours or whatever time frame that is. And it can be really overwhelming. And then with everything else that you have going on, you know, with the mental load of motherhood, um, it can be a lot. Yeah, it definitely. And sometimes that's been an interesting kind of conversation with my husband too, is like, who carries what in the beginning I was just home with my girls. So it was like, I carried the household, but now that I'm also working, it's like, Hey, I need you to maybe pick up a little bit of slack where I feel overwhelmed. Um, and again, I have to get better 
at like voicing that because I think I can do it all. He mm-hmm. thinks I can do it all. And then right. I'm like, I can't do it all. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get to that like breaking point. So it's like also delegating, which again, I'm not great at. So learning to delegate to him or like to my mom or getting a babysitter when I can, um, just that helps like me before reaching burnout as well. Yeah. I think sometimes too, like asking your husbands for help can feel like another task. And I find myself being like, I'll just do it. It's fine. Like I'll do it. It's definitely a work in progress, but I feel like it's necessary. And I've also learned that I sometimes like, I feel like I need that break. And my husband will be like, go out, go do something like go get a pedicure, go hang out with someone or go for a walk. But I'm like, you know what? I've actually realized in this moment, I would really like to be in our house alone. Like that's yes. what I want. Like I don't want to have to go somewhere to get a break. I just want to be here and I want to just have quiet in my space. Do you ever find that you feel that way? Totally. Like we've actually just started this thing on Saturday mornings where Everly has dance and usually I would just like take all the girls cuz Jason's often working on Saturdays. But now I'm like, you know what? Can I have Saturdays at home? Because a lot of my work too I have to like film at home. And I'm like, can you just take the girls, just take all of them. And then that gives me like two hours by myself at home, even just like have a shower and get ready by myself, which is so rare, right? Like being at home by yourself just never happens. So yeah, I totally, we've made that a Saturday morning thing now. And I love it. Yeah. That's nice to like have it. So, you know, that you can look forward to it and it's not as sporadic. I think that's like super smart to do instead of being like, Oh yeah, wait, actually (laughs) weeks have gone by and I need some, (laughs) some alone time now. (laughs) Right. And then I can actually plan and think about what I want to do because other times if it's like last minute, I'm like, I didn't prepare. I don't have anything planned to do while you're gone. Like I almost, (laughs) I need to know it's coming. (laughs) How often is your husband on the road? Um, it really just depends right now. They're kind of on the road a lot because they're in playoffs. So they're kind of, and like a bunch of games got canceled because of COVID and rescheduled. So, but the road trips definitely are not as bad as they, as they are in North America. Those are so brutal. And I like hats (laughs) off to all the moms that do those road trips because they can literally be two weeks long. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like, I, I feel like three days is like my tipping point where I'm like, you got to get back. <laughs> right. It's, you know? it's hard to, when your kids are really young, like that one year old age is so hard. Cause like, it's like all hands on deck. There's no like, Hey, one, just sit there and do something by yourself for a little bit. <laughs> for sure. I feel like whenever we have another child, I'm definitely going to enjoy the newborn stage more just he's so busy now and I'm like oh my god I just miss the days sometimes where you were just like laying there and I could just like leave you on the couch and go run and (laughs) grab something from the kitchen and now I'm like (laughs) I leave him for two seconds and he's like jumping up and down on our bed I'm like okay (laughs) this is this is next level so I wanted to ask you because obviously a lot of us travel and move around and majority of us are are not living near our families So what are your top three tips for flying with your kids on an airplane? So now, so we hadn't flown in so long. Like my youngest had never been on a plane because of COVID. So we finally got to take a trip in October and I was like, oh, I don't even remember how to fly. And I don't know what you guys are going to do on the airplane. So it felt like I was starting over, which was so funny because we used to travel so much, um, but it went really well. It was a lot easier than I thought. So number one thing I'd say is first of all, having their own bag, like obviously if they're old enough, uh, like a little backpack or something I gave them and then let them fill it at home with what they think they'll play with. Obviously I go in after and make sure it's like (laughs) stuff that actually makes sense, but giving them a bit of autonomy over that and just saying like, this is what I'm going to play with. So that when they get on the plane, they're like, oh yeah, I packed this. Um, I found that was really good. And then I'll often grab a few things from the dollar store, like a new toy or a new activity new or stickers, something just to put in the bag, just to kill like those little windows where they're getting kind of like stir crazy. Um, number two, I'd say snacks and, dr- and the water yes. bottle, like all the snacks, like oh, there yes. can never be enough snacks. I'm actually <laughs> always shocked. I'm like, we're hungry again. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like you can never pack enough snacks and like also little snacks like that kind of take time to eat like one thing at a time. I find that's also just like a little time consuming also. And then I'd say 
The number three would be like headphones and an iPad. But it's funny, my girls, I think because they were so excited to be on a plane again, they didn't even like watch their iPads or a movie. They just like wanted to like be in, they were like looking out the window and it's like just so excited to be there. We're just like talking about the experience. But I feel like once that wears off, that <laughs> you iPad, need the iPad. <laughs> yeah, will be like a really good thing to always have on hand. And I like bringing their like big headphones because I find those little ones the airplanes give you just don't fit in their ears. Uh, really well so that we all we have like big ones for them to wear Elsa of course and they love that okay how is flying with three kids uh it was good actually well if you ask Jason he'd be like oh super easy so (laughs) yeah yeah, he's probably sleeping (laughs) actually I my mind was blown so we get on the plane and I'm obviously with two kids and he's with one and somehow he always got the one that fell asleep And I would look back and he would literally be just having a nap with our daughter. And I was like, what? And then of course I was with the two who were like activities, do this, mom, what mom, 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 mom. So it was fine. They didn't like cry. They're kind of, it's nice. They're past the like crying stage for no reason. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I can kind of like talk to them and just keep them busy and distracted. So that wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't like relaxing. (laughs) I'm about to fly. We don't know when yet, but, um, the end of the season from here home. And I am so nervous for the flight. I obviously only have one, but I just, the age I feel like is really tough for airplanes on like a 10 hour flight. That's the hardest age for airplanes. And I never flew as long as you'll have to that. You'll need like all the activities, all the toys, I don't even know. (laughs) I think I need a whole suitcase just of snacks. That's like something I know for sure can keep him occupied. I'm just nervous. He's not going to sleep. Oh man. You're a superhero for, for conquering that with three kids. I think, I mean, that's amazing that it went as well as it did. Yeah. It went really well. It was also a very quick flight. It was just like two and a half hours. So I feel like you can do anything in two and a half hours, but honestly, I'll Pray that your son sleeps for so long. Oh, so that it's really easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have your youngest daughter like right before COVID started? Kind of. Yeah. She was born in July and then I guess COVID hit like March. Okay. Ha- yeah. Did you feel like that was a different experience for you than your first two? Kind of because I was so used to getting out of the house. Like I love just going out and doing things with the girls for more of the my sanity than theirs. Yeah. Um, I felt like being at home was so hard. We had literally never spent a full day at home before COVID hit. And I was like, what do we do at home for this long? And so I had to start getting really creative with activities and stuff, which I also started sharing on my page. Cause I think a lot of moms were in the same boat. They're like, what do we do all day? So yeah. Um, just giving like tips for activities. Anytime I found something the girls liked, I was like, everybody do this. This is great. Kill a half an hour. Um, <laughs> just because I feel like every mom was like, help. What are we doing like at home for this long? And you guys are in Winnipeg, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's obviously really cold there. So what do you do when it's so cold with your kids outside? Oh my goodness. We bundle up sometimes if it's not like minus 40, and oh my gosh. like sometimes you'll only get like a five to 10 minute play window. But if you like factor in getting ready to go outside, it's about half an hour. <laughs> so uh, those are hard. Those were the hardest, the cold winter days when we couldn't go anywhere. Cause yeah, we just spent a lot of time at home. And in the beginning we didn't have our basement finished and we have a pretty small house. And so it just felt like we lived in a little shoe box and I was like, I'm going to lose my mind. So, which is why we also got to work on our basement renovation. I was like, I can't do another winter without a basement. <laughs> now I understand why moms are always outside. Cause like you honestly cannot stay inside all day or you will go crazy. Yes, totally. A hundred percent. I completely relate to that. D- did you ever find that you were like frustrated or discouraged with COVID and having to stay inside and kind of like having the rules change where a lot of things weren't open and just things weren't normal. Yes. Oh, so frustrated, especially because I think in Canada, we were like one of the strictest, like there were months where we couldn't even see our friends. And that was really hard. Cause again, as a mom, like it's all about your community 
and having play dates and just connecting with people in the same stage as you. And also for your kids to have that contact with other people. Mm -hmm. So that was the worst. And it was very, I'm like a rule follower. So I was like, okay, yep. The government's trying to keep us safe. Let's do this. And then by the end, I was like, this is not sustainable. And so, and because I have more of an independent personality, I was like, I'm like, that's fine. We can do this. I I love being home with my girls. We'll figure it out. But I always just felt for people who needed that, those, that relationship aspect and the people to be around who didn't have it. And I feel like that would be so hard if that's your personality and you just felt so alone. And yeah, that was our, I think COVID was so hard for moms. I mean, so hard for so many nurses, teachers, everyone, but moms, it was a very isolating time, I think. Yeah, for sure. I, I also, I wanted to ask you and just tell you, so I read your birth story with your youngest daughter. (laughs) Okay. I have to tell you, I had like almost the same exact experience to the point where I was like laughing at your blog. Yes. So I was, so I dilated super quick too, like from a two to a 10 in like an hour and a half. And my, um, the, what's the, uh, what are, what do they call anesthesiologists took like too long to come in by the time he came in, tried to give me the epidural. It didn't work. So I, and I was laughing so hard at the part where you're talking about how you were like a crazy person and just like yelling things. And I was like, that is me. Like after I gave birth, I was like to the doctors guys, I'm so sorry. Like I was being crazy. They're like, Devin, you just gave birth without an epidural. Like you're not crazy. I'm like, Oh no, that was like, I was full caveman. Yes. It was like the movies. I I literally, I was like, oh, I'm that crazy lady in the ward. Yeah. From the movies. I I was like, that's not real. They're just acting. I'm like, oh no, it's even worse. Oh my gosh. Did you find that you had like any, like just anxiety after that? Cause I feel like I thought about that whole birth experience for honestly months after. I honestly have a terrible memory. So I feel like I kind of just like pushed it out of my mind oh, to never Perfect. think about again except a few <laughs> days later we were at home and my my husband put it recorded on GoPro not from like no. the front but from the side because we never knew the gender <sighs> and so I wanted to see his reaction to like the baby anyways the whole thing is on film and he starts watching it but I don't know that's what he's watching he's like like on a different couch and I just hear like all this swearing and I don't swear and I'm like Ugh, what is that turn that off And he's like, it's you. I was like, what? And I literally have not watched it yet because I'm so scarred. I'm like, I never (laughs) want to see. That's not even me. I don't know what happened. It was like an out of body experience. Isn't it the craziest pain? Like I haven't even broken a bone in my life. And when that happened, I was truly just shook. No, it's crazy. Cause there's like no way out. Like you have to just have the baby. (laughs) I so related to your story. I just, That's uh, so funny. ours were like the same. That's hilarious. I remember yeah. being like, Nope, you just got to get them out, her out a different way. Like this is obviously isn't working. <laughs> I love reading people's birth stories and just like hearing them. And I love watching vlogs. So maybe someday yes. you'll want to share your vlog. <laughs> oh my goodness. You want to share it? Just mute it, mute, put some sound over it. No one will know. <laughs> I know. I feel like if I muted it, cause I want to like see his reaction. I'm like, maybe I'll watch it on mute the first time or like every time. <laughs> yeah. Did you find, did you not find out the gender for all three of your kids? No. Yeah. They were all a surprise. No way. Oh yeah, my gosh. It, did you guys find out? We did find out. Yeah. I'm like, I had to know very early on, but oh, wow. That's so impressive. Was that so hard not to do? Or were you just kind of like used to it at that point? Uh, It wasn't hard. I love the surprise, but I thought all of them were boys. I was wrong on all of them. (laughs) Wow. Like all your, um, like, what is it? The old wives tales. Yeah. Yeah, You thought it was wrong too. And I just like, I was like, no, it's a boy. And and the nurses are always like, oh, a mother's intuition knows. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. I was wrong on all of them. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to ask you about is the home renovations that you guys are doing. So you bought a home from the seventies and you're completely, is it completely remodeled at this point? Yes. Yeah. I think we've well, except the laundry room, but (laughs) okay. It looks so good. Thank you. So when we bought it, we still weren't sure if Jason was going to keep playing hockey. So we were like, Hey, let's get a smaller house that we could rent out if we need to. 
so we kind of thought like, Hey, we'll renovate it. And then, but then that was, it was hard renovating it. Cause we're like, Hey, is this like a forever home or is this going to become a rental? Cause right. you, you renovate those kind of differently. Um, but we were like, Oh no, we might stay in it. So let's do it like really nice just in case this is where we end up. So thank goodness we did. Um, and then, yeah, he never ended up playing hockey. So we've just stayed here and then just slowly kept working on all the projects. Yeah. Well, even if it's not your forever home, I'm sure just because of the amazing job that you guys have done, like you could probably really sell it for probably so much more. My husband's in real estate, so he's all about like (laughs) investing in things. And I feel like, oh, that's just so cool to, to have a space and be able to make it exactly how you want it. Yeah. It's, I love it. My husband would love like a double car garage. And so he's always like looking for other houses. I'm like, I can't leave this house unless the next one looks like this house. (laughs) I was like, you've now created this perfect house for me. I'm like, how do you expect me to leave? So I think it'll be really hard to move, but he's convinced he'll like renovate the next one to look like this. But I'm like, Oh, I don't know. We put so much like heart into this house. Yeah. You're like, I don't know if I can do bedtime again for three months by myself. So we'll have to (laughs) chat. (laughs) Totally. That's so funny. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and chatting with me today. It was so nice getting to know you. No problem. You too. This was so fun.